Number eight then for the 2022 advanced higher paper two. We've got differentiate and solve a differential equation. Well, the first part just says differentiate. Probably something to do with solving the differential equation, though. So for two marks, differentiate this expression here. Well, if you want to differentiate that, I'll just indicate that. Then you've got the product rule, and a wee lonely term in its own. So using the product rule here, differentiate the x, that's a 1, leave that alone. Now leave that alone, and differentiate the log nx, that just goes to 1 over x. Now differentiate the wee lone term, x just goes to 1. Now straight away, that's it done, and there's two marks. Well, you've got one mark for using the product rule, and getting one of the derivatives. So you get the other mark when you finish it off. So tidying it up, that's ln x plus, and that's just 1 minus 1, so it's ln x. Two marks. Well, that part was straightforward. So part B then, hence find the general solution of this differential equation for four marks. Well, this is a first order linear differential equation. First order because the highest derivative is just is just one, it's just the first derivative. And linear because y and its derivatives only appear as themselves, no squares or roots or other functions of y. Well, the way that you solve this is you get an integrating factor. The integrating factor is e to the integral of whatever the little function is that's multiplying the y term, not this one, the y term. If there was anything there, you'd have to bring it over and divide to get an isolated function of x multiplying the y term. So I'll be ln x. So carrying out that integration. Now, realising that you need to use an integrating factor and putting down the correct one gets you the first mark. And now, immediately... You already know that result because in part A, if you differentiated this to produce log nx, then in reverse, integrating log nx will give you this back again. So that's just going to be e to the x ln x minus x. Yes, there would be a plus c is there in there as well, but if you've got e to the something plus c, that could split in, into e to the something times e to the c, and that's just a constant. So when you multiply everything by it, that would just disappear. So there you go. You get a mark just for doing that part of it. Now you're going to multiply by it. And of course, the reason that you create this integrating factor is you want to find something that you can multiply by these two terms specifically, though that has to get it as well. It can't be left out. It would be out of balance. You want to find something you can multiply these two terms by that will result and an exact derivative that would result in the derivative you would get using the product rule. Because look, you've got the two parts. There's y in its own. There's y deriv uh, differentiated. So this would be the function of x, and this should be its derivative over here. Now, multiplying by this does exactly that. I think I'll put it in front here, just to keep it in the same order. So, now, you probably don't write that down, you'd probably write the next line down. But that's what you're using it for. That's the integrating factor, so you multiply each of the terms by it. And what that does is, it reduces this, although I know it's made it bigger, to the pattern for the product rule. Because look, here, y's been left alone, and here it's been differentiated, so that must be the function of x left alone, and this must be the function of x differentiated. And it is, because if you differentiate that, e to the anything stays as e to the anything, multiplied by the inner derivative, which was ln x. So that's just the pattern for this times that. If you were to integrate this up, the next line would be e to the x ln x minus x times y equals, and integrating this side, e to the x ln x minus x, x to the negative x dx, because that was just the product rule, so you knew what the integral of that was. Now, doing that, 
gets the next mark, then you've just got to figure out where this bunch comes to. Now that term there is a wee bit sort of jumbled up. You could simplify that expression. I don't want to keep writing it over and over again. We're kind of not got myself much room. I'll put it over here. If you've got e to the x, ln x minus x, you could start splitting that up. That would be e to the x, ln x times e to the negative x. That's just splitting those parts there. Now, if that x was popped inside, it would expose that logarithm to e. And of course, those are inverses, so they would just cancel out. So I'll do that next. So e to the ln x to the power x, popping that in as a power, times e to the negative x. Now that they're exposed to each other, boom, away they go. And you're left with x to the x, e to the negative x. Right, I could put that in here. So that's equal to the integral of because that was a nasty looking wee thing, wasn't it? That probably scared you, but here it's going to disappear because I've got x to the x, e to the negative x, x to the negative x, dx. So they cancel out and you're just left with this wee simple integral. Now, that just, e just goes back to e, divide by the inner derivative which is negative, so that's negative e to the negative x plus c. And that's you done. So the last thing would just be to rearrange it. I think I'll put that C to the front. C minus, there's only one mark for doing all this as well. C minus E to the negative X divided by this, but might as well write that, because that looks neater like this. Write that in this form. X to the X times E to the negative X for the last mark.